and go ahead and route this. It's, it's kind of nerve wracking. I can't turn the corner. I stop short of the corners. You can't see at all what you're doing because of the confined space that's uh, in the laminate trimmer. And then this guide collar cuts off what little vision you might have had. So this demands total concentration. The laminate trimmer has to be lowered into and removed from the work in line with the direction of the cut. A small plunge router would really be ideal for this application. Make sure the bit is centered in the guide collar. Not all routers are accurate in that respect, including this one. Note all the safety equipment. The face shield may restrict vision and complicate an already difficult task, but I'd rather have that than a life-changing injury. The feed speed is critical. Too fast and the bit is stressed and the quality of the cut suffers, and too slow, the work is burned. See that bit of hesitation? This is a warning sign, one that will play a large part in the outcome. This is why routing makes me so nervous. Look at this tremendous mistake that I just made. What happened was, is that the router got caught on the nail that was, or the the near pin that was sticking up just very slightly. And I thought, because of the limited visibility, I thought it was rotating around on the, on the edge here, but what it was actually doing was rotating on that nail. And I described a perfect arc out from that edge. So, I'm gonna have to fix that. And it could have been worse. I do have enough of the veneer, and you can see here where the pattern lines up. So I'm just going to take and go ahead and finish up routing for the inlay. I'm going to cut out this section of veneer, patch that groove, glue in uh, the patch. It won't be noticeable at all. You'll never even know that it happened, but it does illustrate uh, in the starkest terms <laughs> how one minor mistake or a moment of inattention or some kind of glitch can really set you back. Here is the repair up to this point. I used a plunge router to route out the area where I had routed that arc, glued in a piece of cherry, uh, allowed that to dry, and then I took the router and uh, set it up for the thickness of the veneer and routed out this area here that you see so that it was at the same elevation as the ground for the drawer front. Then I spent a considerable amount of time with the veneer working to find an area that matched up as well as possible and I, it's going to be a completely invisible repair when it's done. I actually had to make it out of a piece that had a natural split in it but that was the best area I had so that's what I did. And you'll notice that I didn't just cut it square, I tried to cut on the slope and grain lines to further disguise it. And I'll be honest, the only reason that this is going to work is because of the swirling nature of the crotch mahogany in this area. Uh, the pattern is kind of indistinct and it would disguise minor variations. And also, there's going to be an inlay around the edge here. So that's going to be a very narrow strip that's going to have the patch to it. Very, very inconspicuous. If this had been uh, straight grain mahogany or uh, something like a curly maple or a bird's eye maple, there's no way I would have been buying more veneer and doing the whole drawer front over. In fact, all the drawer fronts because the pattern had to match between the adjacent drawers. So now what I'm going to do is take uh, some high glue and uh, hammer veneer these patches in place, allow it to dry, and then when they are dry, I'm not going to use the template to continue on here with this straight section. I want to make sure that it's going to line up, so I'm going to use the fence on the router. Getting the template back in exactly the same place might not be too easy. The uh, accident happened before I routed one of these arcs. Now I am going to do that with the template. But that straight section I'm going to do with the uh, fence on the router. This is the area of the repair from that router mishap, and this is after the finish is complete, including the rub out. And one edge of the repair starts right here, and the other edge of the repair is right there. But until that was pointed out, that would be very inconspicuous. You can see, even in the unrepaired area, there's a very stark transition between a light and a dark area, which kind of hides that. You have the same thing right here where the actual repair took place. And over here, it's even less noticeable. And the grain lines flow pretty well across there. But because of the inlays and the all that's going on, it's very inconspicuous.